This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you by BMO Harris Bank. I'm here with the second place finisher at 195 pounds in the state of Illinois, uh, Mesilla Valley wrestler Dylan Irvin. Thanks for joining me today, Dylan. No problem. Now, incredible season for you. Just got to start out. How was the experience of getting to compete in a state final? Man, the feeling was amazing. It was unreal, to be honest. Uh, you know, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I saw like Keenan Carter walk through there, Breonna Hoosier. And I was like, man, dude, I, I got to get down there. I got to get down there. Especially like when you see the finals, you see the grand march, man. You're like, I'll do anything. I'll kill to be down there. So senior year, when it actually happened, I was like, dude, I can't believe this is actually happening to me right now. This is like, it's happening to me. It was unreal feeling. I'm extremely grateful. Yeah, it was an unbelievable senior year for you. 41 wins on the season. Did you really see this coming? I mean, I know we, we were kind of chatting a little earlier about, you know, the work that you put in, but really just such a breakout year, you know, consistently ranked in the top five in the state throughout the season. And then, you know, getting to see that come through at state as well. Just what was that, the experience of the whole season like for you? It was, the whole season was, un, it was another unreal, like, feeling because, like, if you would have asked me freshman year, if you see me senior year doing this, I like, have gotten as far as I did now, I couldn't have an answer for it. I was like, man, I, that's a long shot. I couldn't tell you. And so from freshman year to senior year, I've grown so much. Torres saw me, Torres saw me through so many things. He's pushed me through so many things. And it's I, he, saw, he put me through so many things and, and did nothing but make me strong and make me better. He's definitely like a father to me. So like all the time and effort he put into me, not only including Torres, but his family, this like senior year, I just wanted to give it all back to him, say this is my last time, this is my last hoorah. So I just, I wrestled every match like it was my last, and I just wanted to bring some back home, not for my family, not for the team, but also for Torres, because he's the one that's put a to me. And, and you mentioned Torres a lot, you know, he's always right by your side at all those matches, and you mentioned that you've been working together for a long time as well, but got to talk a little bit about the, the whole staff also. We did a feature on it earlier that there are nine coaches on this staff for 14 wrestlers, so what's it like wrestling with, you know, coming to practice, and a lot of times, you know, there'll be two, three coaches, but it's basically almost a one-to-one -one ratio that you guys had. There's been times in practice when I had to rotate through three coaches. Like, one coach would come in for six minutes, he sit out, I get a fresh coach, fresh, 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 and I'm dying. And it's just grind matches. So having those type of guys in here pushing me to things like that, because they've experienced things that I'm trying to accomplish and things like that, so they know what it takes to get there. They know what it takes to become successful in this sport. So having them in the wrestling room, not only just Torres, but like uh, uh, Coach Pickett, Coach Zach, Duran, etc. You know, having those guys to experience the things I'm trying to experience and pushing me to limits, it was it was tremendous opportunity. It was a blessing from God Himself. Is there one specific thing you can think of? I'm sure a lot of advice, you know, comes around in the wrestling room throughout the year. But is there one piece of advice maybe from this season that one of the coaches, perhaps Torres or, or another coach, said to you that really kind of has held true and kind of guided you throughout this uh, your senior season? Yeah, it's almost, it's two things really. It's one thing I will never forget it. Um, Torres told me this. He says, what you put into it is what you're going to get out. If you put in hard work and dedication and sacrifice and things like that, the outcome is going to be tremendous. And I, as soon as he said that, it hit home for me right then and there. I was like, well, man, like, that, it has to be true. You know what I mean? So keeping that, I did everything I could to, to, to set myself up for success and things like that. So, and then the second thing, I think it's one of the most powerful things that I still live by today is to embrace the grind. Because I'm telling you, like, now that it's all over, man, I'm gonna miss it. Mm -hmm. well, as soon as after my final match, man, I took the singlet off. I, I just realized that was my last time repping Matea Valley. And I'm gonna miss it, like, more than anything. You just gotta embrace the grind, you gotta love the sport. No matter what happens, you gotta love it. Well, Mustang Nation certainly has to be very proud of what you were able to do at state. You know, you ended up losing to the number one wrestler in the state, so can't be too upset about it. But just you know, getting to wrestle that number one guy, you mentioned the Grand March and that being something that you always wanted to come out to. And when we spoke with Claudio after state as well, that was one thing he mentioned, just how cool it was seeing a guy, you know, seeing Mattia Valley represented in the Grand March. What was that feeling for you coming out in front of that packed U of I Coliseum and just you know seeing all those people and really knowing that. That was the moment that you were really, really truly representing Matia Valley there. It was, it was unbelievable. 
like when I was going down the state viewing the Grand March and things like that, I'm like, I'm just looking at, I'm like, I'm in myself. I'm like, man, this is so cool. It's so awesome. I'm not even in it. So to actually be in it, it's just the feeling is two times better to actually walk around the stadium, you know, to, just to know that I'm representing not only myself, Torres, Black and Gold, Matea Valley, Mustang Nation. It's just to know that I'm representing them in a positive way. It's, it's, it's like a gift within itself, you know what I mean? It's a blessing from above. And it's just, it's like, it's almost a sigh of relief because I can, I can finally say like, I'm paying back to the people that, that helped me out the most. You know what I mean? So it was, it was a tremendous feeling. And obviously it has to be especially meaningful for you getting to make that trip your senior year. Uh, another state qualifier on the team though, Philip Sims in his freshman year, unfortunately wasn't able to, to go because of an injury that he got at sectionals. But for you in, as a senior, you know, having a phenomenal season and then getting to see what Sims was doing as a freshman, just what can you say about what he brought to the team, you know, energy. And I'm sure there's times, you know, he, he'll typically wrestle probably a match or two right after you at a lot of meets. And you're probably pretty tired on some of them, but I'm sure yeah, that was a match you always wanted to keep an eye on when he was coming up at 113. Philip, man, he reminds me of so much like myself in my freshman year. He's, this kid, is, he's an unreal stud. He's a stud, dude. I'm not, I'm not even lying. Like, that kid has, the sky's the limit for him. Mm -hmm. I just, so like when I see him wrestle, I'm like, man, and especially when we wrestle matches and he lose a match, like making those freshman mistakes, I'm like, God, I can see myself so much into this kid, I swear. And I just want the best for that kid because he's, I've seen that kid work like his tail off in this room. He's getting been pushed to limits. And it's funny, like how you just, like you see kids in the room and they're, like, they're just break mentally. You can just start to, start to sense it. He wasn't one of those kids. And I'm like, man, like he has something like unique. Not only does he yeah. bring something unique to this wrestling team, bring some, he can bring something new when you need to the school in itself. And he brought, showed that by being the first freshman to make it to state. That kid is, he's unreal, and I'm telling you, the sky's the limit for him. And I just, I'm excited to see how he does. Yeah, like you said, it's gonna be certainly exciting to keep an eye on him throughout his four years and such a terrific freshman season. But for you, your fourth year on the team, and you, you kind of really considered this to be your breakout season. What were some things that kind of went in for this year to get the success compared to the to what you were able to accomplish in, in your first three years on the team? I would say probably the thing that, that stood out the most is my preseason. My preseason, I, if I'm not, I went through four tournaments. I've worked like six days of the week. In the, I was in the wrestling room six days of the week, like three hours every day. Every day getting better and getting better, getting pushed. And I, went to, and I uh, uh, attended four different tournaments. It was the Indiana quali Indiana Indiana qualified for Super 32, and I got second at that. I lost to Blake Rappel in the finals. Wow, he's another uh, national ring guy. <laughs> and then it was Conflict of Carver in Iowa. I won that tournament. And then after that, we went to preseason nationals. I got second there. Wow. Yeah, and I lost to Owen Webster, another nationally ranked wrestler, <laughs> and in the finals. And then Super 32, and that's if that tournament, man, that's probably one of the hardest tournaments in high yeah. school itself. And just, and I made it all the way to the quarterfinals, and I lost twice to two nationally ranked studs. And it was close matches, but I lost both to, I lost to those two guys. So to, just to say that I took part of all those four tournaments, I felt like it gave me such a great preparation going into the season, because it's not like I'm going first to the season, I haven't had any matches yet, I'm just, just going straight in there. I have had matches, I've wrestled, I continue to stay on the mat. I didn't take any breaks off. So keeping that in mind, people are coming to the season, taking their, usually taking their preseason break off. It would come from football, things like that. Yeah. I stayed on the mat the whole time. So I was, I was still in the zone. I was still in the, mm. I was in the mood, especially having the success I was in the uh, terms I was doing over the preseason. I was, just, I was just ready to keep grinding. So it showed and pushed forward for uh, my uh, current season. Now you mentioned some of the nationally ranked wrestlers that you got to wrestle, but getting a little more locally, uh, the matches that you had with Max Irie, you know, each more entertaining than the last, and it seemed like every guy's, every time you guys wrestled, it was coming down to the wire, and that Mattia Wabonzi rivalry, you know, you guys were ranked three and four in the state, and then it would flip the next time you guys faced off. What was the matchup like every time you'd go up with Irie? You know, you guys met several times. You had the dual meet, conference, regional, sectional, and everyone came down to the wire. Yeah. Um. 
going to every match, it's like when you continue to wrestle somebody, you tend to pick up on their habits and things like that. So after the um, the regular duel meet, I won that one. And then the conference come, came and I lost that one. Mm. That's the one I lost. And then I was realizing because he's starting to pick up on my habits. And I was like, man, because I keep wrestling this guy. Most likely I'm going to see for, uh, regional sectionals and maybe even state. So with that mentality going into regionals after taking the loss from conference, I had to almost wrestle a different style. Yeah. Or switch it up from time to time. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, with someone like Max Irie with the, uh, with the credentials that he has, he's going to pick up on it fast. And it's, if he picks up on it, he's going to capitalize on it. And it's going to make it two times harder for you to do anything else. So almost every single time we wrestle, I had to switch my style, switch my style, switch my style. And that's pretty much the mentality going into that. Just keep the train, same work ethic, working hard and things like that. Just different style here, different style that. Do this, try that. And yeah. And Max going to be wrestling at uh, Northern Illinois University next year. Do you have any plans for after school yet? Any uh, colleges that are, are on the radar? Or how, how's the start of that experience? Going? Absolutely. I'm 100% I'm wrestling in college, no doubt in my mind. But with the season starting and things like that, I just wanted to focus on wrestling. Mm -hmm. So now that the season's in, I'm, me, and my, uh, me and my coach Torres, we're going to sit down. We're going to start going college visits. We're going to start figuring things out and find the right college that's going to be right for me for the next four or five years and that I can stand out and has the you have the best outcome for me. So after now the season's over, we're gonna have time, we're gonna spend time and gonna get things figured out, things like that. Then uh, here in the wrestling room Mattia got the wall of the you know former state qualifiers and uh, speaking with Claudio, your your picture's gonna be going up there shortly. What's that feeling for you knowing that, you know, your name always going to be there at the state meet with Mattia Valley, and then in the wrestling room here, you're going to have you know that personalized photo of you going down to state, and not only just qualifying for state, but being able to make it to the finals. Any last thoughts on just that experience and the legacy you were able to leave here at Mattia Valley? Man, it's the when I first started wrestling, like wrestling here at Mattia Valley, I just I just wanted to leave my mark, leave my mark on wh whoever, whomever, whatever. Just, I just want to leave my mark. And that's not just including the school, that's including the people that's running, coming here, putting the wrestling shoes on, wrestling for Matea Valley Mustangs. So the key thing is I want to leave my mark. And I saw an opportunity with a picture on the wall. So every single time I came in here, you see those names, Austin Graham, Breonna Hoosiers, Keenan Carter, some of the best wrestlers that ever came through this and stepped foot on this mat. And just to finally say that my name is going to be up there and say that I'm one of those kids. So the next person, the next generation, like Philip Sims, someone like this, when they come in, it gives them motivation. So so when they look up to me, it's a blessing in itself, honestly. It's it's a sign of relief. It's a sign of, like, just I'm just so grateful. And it's just accomplishments after accomplishments. It's just nothing, no better feeling, no better feeling at all. Congratulations on finishing up a phenomenal career on the wrestling mats here and your second place finish in state and best of luck with everything that you do with the rest of your future. Thank you very much. Thank you.